Hey yo, what's up YouTube, it's your boy Ashton Jackson, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about the very first day of training camp, which was today. Uh, guys like Mozzie Smith, Luke Schoomaker, John Stevens Jr., DeMarvin Overshone, Mozzie Smith, I, I already said his name, but all the guys that were previously, oh, Oso Dikizuwa, all the guys that were previously injured in minicamp, uh, the ones that didn't participate in minicamp because of injury are clear to play except for Trevon Diggs, he had to start the year on PUP. Uh, what I am hearing is that he's not going to be readily available for the start of the season. We'll talk about that more um, after this intro. So before we hop into the video, I appreciate if you guys would like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Comment and share my video with anyone who you think will enjoy my content, man. Okay. did see before we hop into this section of the video i did have a little highlight tape uh rolling about the uh training camp and what was going on like trey lance got picked off today which that wasn't really his fault if you look at the throw that he did made he, he hit the running back hit the back out of the backfield right in his chest it popped right up in the air that's the interception either which way he's going to get clowned for it and people are going to you know uh try to clown him for it but it happens all the time in the nfl there's so many times when there's a lot of natural fault interceptions by the quarterback, but they'll still blame the quarterback for making that mistake regardless. So, things like that happen in the league. It's fine. Uh, Dax Tolbert is really looking good right now in training camp. Hopefully, that progresses into the uh, regular season. Uh, Jalen Tolbert is a high-confidence player, and we know that. We can tell by the way he does play football. He caught a touchdown in the last game of the season versus Washington. So, um, he's going to... Be a really good player for us, and hopefully he is a solid wide receiver three. But uh, we'll talk about that uh, next time in the video, more about Jalen Tober. But uh, shout out to Patrick Nosey Walker for the notes and for the videos that I did provide at the beginning of the video. And then also Defy, uh, Defy Talks, also follow him on Twitter, Instagram. He'll keep you guys up to date on anything that you need to know Dallas Cowboys as well. If you have those uh, Twitter, Instagram, those both of those guys will keep you up to date, and there's so many great people that cover the Dallas Cowboys as well. Those are just the two names I, I saw today that I have borrowed their content for. So, right now, what I'm reading and what I'm showing you guys on the screen right now is Patrick Nosey Walker. And the first thing he did talk about was Mozzie Smith and talking about how noticeably bigger he is and heavier than he was even six weeks ago. So, what, six weeks from today was a month ago sometime in June. So, that's really great progression that we're seeing right there. He's still he's getting bigger, which is what we wanted him to be, since we drafted him out of Michigan to be that true nose tackle, uh, nose tech that we wanted him to be out of Michigan. So, uh, his talk about his power is still there, and it's flat out uh, punishing people. So, we're gonna see what Mike Smith is going to look like against uh, Cooper BB when once the, I think, not think once the pads come on, we're really gonna find out. They always talk about when you put on the cast, you, you separate the boys from the men. Once the uh, pass come on. So once the pass come on and Mozzie Smith is still doing his thing, he's he's beating on guys like Brock Hoffman and he's giving trouble to guys like uh, Tyler Smith or guys like Cooper Beebe or Zach Martin. I think that's going to be really great for a guy like Mozzie Smith just for his confidence and then for him as an NFL player because he had a lot of, you know, he had a lot of confidence issues last year and they were talking about that even in wins, uh, you saw that he was very down and, and sad on himself because he wasn't having great, good to great performances. So we're going to see what Mike Smith is going to do this year, and we're heavily relying on him, and so was Mike Zimmer. Uh, number two, Trey Lance had a mixed bag on day one. The interception, we'll get to that in a moment, was not his fault. 
uh, good, simple throw, but while he was decisive on some plays, he didn't process quickly enough on a couple others. Windows closed fast, leading to dead plays. Have seen plenty of OTAs in mini camp that he can build on and will be key for him to settle in tomorrow and beyond day one. Maybe he has Oxnard nerves. We'll find out. Again, Trey Lance is a very inexperienced type of quarterback. I know that he did go three, number third overall in the 2021 draft class. But again, this is what comes with the uh, pain of a young quarterback who doesn't have a lot of experience at the quarterback position. These are things that are going to happen. Uh, processing is not going to be too quick. And he's going to make a lot of error throws. That's what's going to happen. So with Trey Lance, I really felt like uh, everyone's talking about he's coming from Dax. He's coming for Dak's job. First of all, he has to be he has to outbeat Cooper Rush, and probably with some politics, he will be quarterback too. Regardless, he has to have a very piss poor type of performance in training camp for him to not win the quarterback two spot. But we're going to see what Trey Lance can be in this offseason. This is a very big offseason for him to step up. If he can't step up, he's probably not going to make it in this league. I'm I'm saying that nicely. Uh. Okay, uh, second clip. Not second clip, but a uh, second set of notes. Uh, DeMarvin Overshone, John Stevens Jr. both moved well in their return from injury. Overshone more so as John Stevens Jr. works to learn his new mask, give it a couple of practices. Uh, DeMarvin Overshone, they call him Demo, already looks comfy with his. Again, uh, DeMarvin Overshone already put on weight. So they're talking about John Stevens also bulked up as well. So that's what normally happens. When you're a rookie and you come into your second year into the league, that's what that's what normally happens. You bulk into your man body. Uh, Vosh calls it off-season peanut butter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I call it going into your grown man body because once you're coming off from being a kid in college, you know, off that college diet and, you know, that college regimen that you're doing is way different once you come to the pros. They ask you to do a lot of different things, and they have a lot of more techno advanced technology in the league than they already do in college. So once you come over to the league, they already know what you need to work on. They already have enough trainers and chefs and everything like that to get you ready to get you into your man body once you're already a full year into the NFL. So the Marvin Overshawn is going to look solid. John Stevens Jr. is going to be uh, uh, working on his uh, mass and working on the weight muscle that he gained. Same goes for Mozzie. So we're going to see how these guys look out. Uh, Jalen Tolbert, we already talked about earlier before, saying how he's a confidence player. Uh Patrick Nelsie started off the sentence saying, wow, period. Uh, confidence remains sky high from last season. In the back shoulder throw from Dak in the end zone to put the offense on the one-yard line. Required unreal, unreal skills. Uh, body manipulation to get his frame turned 180 degrees on a dime. And the soft hands to fully extend and snatch the ball away from the body to bring in for the catch. Again, wow. And you did see that. That was a hell of a catch. That's an NFL type of catch that you make. And you got to be one of those athletes to make those type of catches, right? So he made that catch. And those are some of the things that Jalen Tober can do. Again, he has a height. He has everything to get himself going into this league. He'll be fine. I have a lot of confidence in Jalen Tolbert. Will he out reception uh, CeeDee Lamb once he gets his contract? No. Ferguson, no. Cooks, no. But you being that fourth or fifth option, I really think that he can be one of those really good fourth or fifth options in this league if we give him opportunities and he makes most of his opportunities. I think Jalen Tober will be a really fine player for the Dallas Cowboys. You can see him to fit in that role, that Cedric Wilson type of role. You know, Cedric Wilson was our utility player, but he was a fine receiver and he was able to get open when we needed him to. And when we need him to play as a wide receiver three, once Mike Gallup got hurt in 2021, there wasn't a significant drop off between Gallup and Cedric Wilson. And that's what you talk about in this league when they're talking about next man up. There shouldn't be a significant drop off. Now, again, if you're trying to fill in a Dak Prescott, a Michael Parsons, a CeeDee Lamb, a Trayvon Diggs, there will be a significant drop off. But with a guy like Michael Gallup, who is really talented, but Cedric Wilson and Michael Gallup are kind of on the same tier level. And you saw that Cedric Wilson picked up right off where Michael Gallup left um, when he f suffered his injury. So, again, Jalen Tober will be fine. First touchdown of camp that we did see in the uh, highlight reel that I did set up in the beginning of the uh, video again was with Jalen Marino Cropper. He was our uh, undrafted free agent from last year out of Fresno State. Uh, he picks up where he left off this time one year ago in an out route in the end zone and dragging toes to bring it in for the touchdown from Dak Prescott. Again, Jalen Marino Cropper, I felt like, is going to have another underrated camp. And I possibly feel like this is a dude, if he makes some headway, I do feel like he can make the 46 active roster. 
if guys like Jalen Brooks can't step up, if um, problems if Jalen Tolbert isn't ready, problems if Jalen Tolbert has a hamstring problem, and then you have Brooks that steps in, and then you have Jalen Marino Cropper that comes in. I feel like Marino Cropper can come in if Tolbert isn't ready or if he's having a hamstring issue. Hopefully he doesn't. Prayfully he doesn't. But I just do feel like Jalen Marino Cropper is one of our underrated type of dudes, and this is a guy that the Dallas Cowboys don't really want to cut or even risk being on the um, training camp, especially if he can provide something to your roster day one or week one starting in the season. I feel like he can possibly bring you something. He is slot due, in my opinion. And uh, this is definitely a guy that uh, I have confidence in. Not saying I'm not, like, super high on he's going to be better for sure than Jalen Tober. I'm not saying that. But I do feel like if we needed him in the pinch or an emergency type of situation, I do feel confident with a guy like Jalen Marino Cropper to get open in the slot. Uh, Jalen Brooks is already standing out. Had at least one great catch in seven on seven drills and nearly a highlight grab after climbing the ladder downfield on a scramble drill. But elite hands played by Josh DeBerry to jar it loose as Brooks went onto the ground. Bet move by the UDFA. And that was a play that you saw. Cooper Rush, he rolled out to his right. He made that throw to Jalen Brooks. And what's his name again? I'm sorry. Uh, Josh. Uh, DeBerry went in and broke it off. That was a really savvy veteran type of play, like Patrick Nosey said. And the first pick of training camp came from Jason Johnson as the undrafted free agent with Johnny on the spot following a throw from Trey Lance that was tipped and then caught by Johnson. You guys saw that as well. Luke Schoomaker isn't showing signs of his healed hamstring or his healed foot troubling him. So basically none of his past injuries are giving him any troubles, thank God. Um, he looked very decisive in his routes and particularly confident in planning to exit his breaks. Had at least one good catch inside seam break for a first down from Dak. Again, I felt like uh, with uh, Schoonmaker, I think once he puts it together, I think he'll be a fine player. I think he'll be solid. Will he ever? Will he? Uh, will Will he ever justify that uh, second round uh, price tag or draft pick that we that we uh, picked him up in? No. But again, you know, being a block and tight end, what what much more can you really expect from a guy like uh, from Luke Schoonmaker, who's already dang near in his mid twenties, about to be in his thirties, only in his rookie year? You know, what more can you really expect from him? I think he's going to be a solid player. I think at his peak, he isn't going to be a guy like George Kittle, or Travis Kelsey. No, I think he's going to be a solid player. I think he's going to be solid for you in a 12 personnel when you do go out there with one back and two tight ends and two receivers. I really do feel confident. Uh, that I want, that I, yeah, we really need a guy like Lou Schoolmaker to step up because he is a second round pick. And again, how many second round picks are we carrying around on our roster currently right now that has balled out for us? Not many. I don't, I think maybe two on our roster right now uh, that are second round picks that are actually making a difference for us. That Those are Trayvon Diggs and DeMarcus Lawrence. That's it. Again, I talked about it before where our track record for second round picks, we are horrible in the first round of day two. So, Hopefully, Lou Schoomaker can become a player for you, and he will be on this roster whether we like it or not because they did spend um, draft capital and they did spend a lot of resources to get him here. So that that's going to work itself out. And if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, you're rooting for him to ball out because the inconsistency at tight end two has been astronomically horrid because we really needed a tight end two for the past three years. And if we can consistently get into 12 personnel, we feel confident in 12 personnel. I think that can help with our deficiencies in the run game. And then not really, but definitely it can help out Tyler Guyton, right? Because when you're having this, when you're possibly having two rookies start at your offensive line, which today uh, the first team offensive line was Chumi Doga at left tackle, Tyler Smith at left guard, Brock Hoffman at center, right guard Zach Martin, and then right tackle Terrence Seal. Those were your starting five. I think when the season starts, week one at Cleveland, I think it will be Tyler Guyton, tackle, guard, Smith, other guard, Martin, center, BB, right tackle, Terrence Seal. I think that will be your eventual uh, best five that you, that you can put out on the field. And uh, that's about it for the video. Again, um, really great camp from Jason Johnson picking off Trey Lance. It's great or solid enough uh, training camp today from Schoolmaker. We already know that Dak is going to be pretty solid. Jalen Marino Cropper picking up where he left off. Jalen Brooks stepping up. Jalen Tolbert stepping up. So all the 45,000 Jalens that we have on our team is stepping up. And thankfully that they're able to do that. And then 
Uh, you have DeMarvin Overshone. Uh, here he looks comfy in his role. You got John Stevens Jr. doing his thing. Uh, he's, again, getting back into shape and everything like that. Remember, he had a significant injury last year, torn his, tearing his ACL. So hopefully he'll be fine. And then you have Mozzie Smith, who is uh, already coming into camp bigger and already having a better camp than he did last year in terms of just coming in and uh, looking a lot heavier than he was. And then Trey Lance had a mixed bag. It's fine. He doesn't have a lot of experience at the position anyway. Dak Prescott looks solid. Uh, Mike Parsons did have some reps today at inside linebacker. Um, again, I talked to, I talked about that enough at nauseum, talking about how that's why we need a guy like Sam Williams to be uh, eight to a ten sack a season type of player. So that's where we can move around Michael Parsons. And really, that's been it for the video, guys. Hope you guys have a nice day. Stay safe, stay blessed. Bye.